My wife has always felt that the appropriate number of pillows to put on any piece of furniture is just however many it takes to make it completely impossible to sit down. And lest you think this is a cherry-picked example, this is a real clip of my bed. How in the world are we going to lay down and sleep on that bed? <laughs> We gotta get to work here because I spent $7,118 really for you guys. I spent it on this website, farewellpet.com. Now it was a Project 24 member who sold us the website and she has been very successful building this website, only writing 21 articles and then you're gonna see the traffic it's getting. Yikes, 37,000. 355 page views from 21 articles. That is amazing. Our goal is to get to 1,000 page views per article per month. She's getting 1,778 page views per article per month. So she's way exceeded what we would consider even our goal. And so we're gonna talk about the search analysis that allowed this to happen, some of the niche selection, and also some really cool things that's being done with content to win Google rankings. This video is gonna show you what is winning today. So it's cool, right? To be able to see an actual niche site being created and how much traffic it gets. But whenever you see these things on YouTube, you always see the bottom right of the screen blocked out with white or blurred or whatever, something covering it because nobody would want to invest in a website, build it up, and then just give away what the top um, performing articles, the top keywords are on that website, right? That's why we blur that bottom right portion every time we, you watch a YouTube video. But today, it's time to unblur the bottom right, one at a time. So first, the number one article on this site is how to comfort a dying hamster. That gets 8,300 page views a month. 8,300 page views a month. One article on a very tiny niche site. That is impressive. It's also impressive because frankly, if you would have asked me six months ago, should I write an article like that? I would have said, mm, that sounds probably too small. Honestly, with our old, search analysis process that we taught in the old version of our membership, it was kind of a spaghetti on the wall approach. We were trying a lot of different things and sometimes you'd get lucky and sometimes not. And we'd try to be the smartest as we could about it, but it was a lot of spaghetti on the wall. Since May 3rd, when we released our new flagship course, we taught a new search analysis method that makes it much easier to get an idea of how much traffic a particular article has. So without showing too much here, I wouldn't have written this article with the previous search analysis process, how to comfort a dying hamster. With the new search analysis process, you guys know what to do if you search dying hamster in that thing, you would actually see that, oh, we get a partial result and thus there is enough search volume to write about, actually quite a lot. And that's exactly what we see here. Now she's decided to take the particular swing at that, at that uh, phrase of the dying hamster with how to comfort a dying hamster, 8,300 page views per month. That's great, it has worked incredibly well. Let's go to the next one. Is it legal to bury pets in the backyard? 7,429 page views, that's incredible. Is it legal to euthanize a healthy dog? What do you do with a dead puppy? How to comfort a dying rat? 10 best garden plants. It's incredible, we'll just reveal the whole thing how many times this is done well. So let's go into our battleship method. These are the 21 posts on the site how many page views they've received in the last 30 days. This is the ranking position. Look at this. Ranking position one, 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 two, one, one, three, one. They're almost all hit posts, mostly hit posts or monitor to keep updated. It's incredible what has happened here. Either this was amazing search analysis 
that we just found very, very low competition topics, or something very, very right happened in the writing portion of this website, that's the next puzzle. Let's figure it out. So let's take that exact problem that we saw before, how to comfort a dying hamster. I see farewell pet is number one. WikiHow is number two. How to keep your hamster comfortable when it's sick or dying. WikiHow ranks really well. It's an exceptional site. In a lot of uh, verticals, they are going to win. This article was written by a veterinarian. It's illustrated well, it has good ideas of what to do here. It's actually quite a good article. And yet, she's beat it out on a brand new website. We also see a forum, but it's a forum a hamster hideout. It's for hamster owners, and it actually has some really good content in there. Another WikiHow article that it has beat out. There's also a Reddit that's usually pretty easy to beat. That one isn't very helpful. There's a video on, on point that has been beaten. Then there's some Quora, some other things as well. Overall, it's a little checkered. We do see some forums in there, but we also see two articles from very authoritative sites written by a veterinarian. We see a video on point. All of it was beaten by this brand new website. Inside this post is one thing that will help your post to rank that I have been really focused on teaching our writers at contentwarrior.com. And that's really through Nathan. Nathan is doing so much at Content Warrior. Let's read through this article. The first sentence is a little bit of a throwaway. Then we get to the magic word. Our pets are not just animals, they're family members. They give us love, company, and many wonderful memories. A lot of blog posts start out this way, nothing wrong with it, it's okay. It kinda establishes empathy okay, but it's not really meaty yet. A few years ago, there it is. This is the magic word in blogging that we're not using enough. The word I. I want you to use the word I in blogging way more. It's what AI can't accomplish. If all we're doing is summarizing the web, there's no I in that. You're not telling an anecdote. You're not saying something that you've actually been through. You're just summarizing stuff. And we're gonna talk about in just a second how we're taking our writers at Content Warrior and having them use the word I way more. So she tells the story of, of her hamster who was dying and exactly what she did. Now that is really, really helpful. Then we see the, the tips and there's good in-depth information. It's a long, meaty post. Wouldn't mind seeing some formatting and images in here. But it's just good, solid information. Really, if I were to boil this down to the one thing that separates this from WikiHow, they both have good content, but this one is written from a place of personal experience with her own dying hamster. That is tough to beat in any situation. We just hired a new batch of writers at Content Warrior and we really wanted to impress upon them that we don't wanna just summarize the web. What we've been teaching them is there are three levels of content. There's summarize the web. That's the lowest level of content. The next level is the journalist. Somebody who is actually going and doing original research to add to what is on the web, though they aren't an expert themselves. For example, if you are a journalist and you're asked to write about the uh, economic situation of uh, small businesses in Cuba, well, you aren't just gonna Google it and summarize some stuff. A journalist would contact some small business owners in Cuba. They would uh, reach out to people. They would talk to somebody in the government and get some more information. They would reach out to experts and give that new information. And then the highest level of, of content on the web is actual expert information that have personally done those things as well. So we saw a veterinarian who wrote an article there, but it was really probably just their check mark on an article. Uh, there, was no, there were no anecdotes, things like that in the article. And so when our writers came into Content Warrior um, a few weeks ago, Nathan put candies taped up against the wall everywhere. We're gonna have to pay so much to repaint that place. We put candy all over the walls, and then every time a writer, when they're writing a post, 
when they go do original research, such as calling an expert, they'll just call a pet store, they'll call a veterinarian, they'll go do a poll on a Facebook group, whatever, actual original research, then they go pull down a candy from the wall and they can have it. Uh, we just really wanted to beat into their heads, original research is the key right now to the web. And that's why this is it. This is original research beating the big guys on a new website. I mentioned in my video two weeks ago that I'm working to build up backfire.tv to a million page views a month. The site is new right now, it is itty bitty and tiny, but we are working really hard and you can go to see some of our early efforts. I wanna show you a post that I personally wrote on the website just this week. It's called, seven reliable spots to hunt elk in Idaho. Anytime that there's an industry where people are secretive about something, I get really excited because it gives me an opportunity to not be secretive and to really win some attention because of it. You saw it in this video where nobody's showing you the top keywords on their website because they're worried about protecting it, right? And rightly so. But I see an opportunity that, hey, I could teach something unique that people really need to see what's working. And so this is what I did here as well. In the hunting space, nobody will ever share where they go hunting. Like it is incredibly secretive. Hunters are very secretive about this stuff. And so what did I do? Well, I shared GPS coordinates to some of my favorite hunting places <laughs> right there in the article. Now, the negative to that, obviously, is we don't want to overrun a particular area with too many people. And so I shared dozens and dozens of spots so that it could spread that out. Anytime somebody's secretive, that's an opportunity for us as content creators to step in. Also, I want you to go read this post. This is the type of content that I'd love to see everybody creating. Sharing insider information on something that people are actually searching. One other post that I want you guys to check out this week, I think it's gonna make you a better content creator, is this one. What animals hunters do and don't eat? A complete guide. The reason that I think this one's interesting is in previous days, I probably would have broken this apart into seven to 10 different articles. Do hunters eat deer after they kill them? Do hunters eat elephants after they kill them? Whatever. Um, and there's still some merit for doing that. But here I felt Honestly, I could create a better resource by just putting it all in one and then they could get an idea for how this works just in general. And so this is a query group and uh, this is exactly how I'd like to see a post being written. It took me about three hours to produce the post. It has tables, it has tons of different answer targets in there. I mean, this thing could rank for a lot of different terms. I want you to check it out. This is really the future of how we're seeing things. I had a lot of thoughts and I hope they're coming out in this video. Basically what I wanted to share with you in this video is six months ago, I felt like it was 60% search analysis, 40% the ability to write an incredible and helpful blog post. Search analysis was really the sticking point and I've been saying that for a long, long, long time. I feel like with the new version of the blogging course, we just shifted it. I feel like search analysis is pretty learnable now. If you're following that process, I'm, I'm seeing good things, that it's kind of putting some sanity checks on you to make sure we're on the right track as we go, as particularly with the new search analysis tool. And so I feel like that has become slightly less difficult, but now, in the age where Google is getting better and better at finding that original content with the word I in it, the things that are journalistic in nature, if you can now write this type of post, there's gonna be nothing that can stop you. So your homework assignment today is to go to backfire.tv and just read through those two posts. They're by no means perfect, but Hopefully it'll help you to understand how we're winning on Google so that you can too.